Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, my sweet babies, aka my tea sippers. Whew. Okay, so we got to get into some things. There's a lot going on right now. If you guys do not know, right now, Twitter is in shambles once again, okay? So right now, Cat Williams is trending. Club Shay Shay is trending. Kevin Hart is trending. Tiffany Haddish is trending. Taraji P. Henson is trending. And they're all trending because of who? Miss Monique, okay? Monique went on Club Shay Shay and she basically let it all, she put it all out there, honey. She didn't hold no prisoners and I was here for it. And so these clips are currently going viral all over social media. She talks about the whole Taraji P. Henson situation. Um, she talked about Tiffany Haddish, honey, Kevin Hart. So we're gonna go ahead and watch some of these. I'm gonna give you my reaction as we're watching them. So yeah, this whole situation is just, it's crazy, honey, but I'm here for all this mess, okay? I remember our beautiful sister, Tiffany Haddish. Mm -hmm. Did an interview with GQ magazine. And this, in my humble opinion, is where we keep throwing each other under the bus. Mm -hmm. You're doing an interview with GQ magazine. And I I'm assuming the journalist was a white person. Mm -hmm. And the conversation turned to Monique. And she said, well, I don't do business like Monique do business. And I'm glad I don't have that husband of hers. Mm. But she don't know your husband. And when I saw that, it's like, Tiffany, if you had a husband like mine, you may not have two DUIs. Mm. Mm. If you had a husband like mine, you may not be caught up in what looks like you could have been grooming a child. Mm -hmm. And I say all of that with no judgment. But when you speak about having a husband like mine, you open up the door. And I'm saying to you, mm. if you had one like mine, you may not sit in these positions that you can't explain the next day. Right. Or it's a hard way to go. So once again. Well, she doesn't even have a husband, let alone like yours. Well, well, damn it. Now you said it. Oh, I'm here for the shade. I'm here for it because Tiffany and a lot of them have been shading Monique over the years and acting like Monique is beneath them. And, you know, once Tiffany was on her little rise to the top, it was a lot of stepping on Monique. And the only person who really had Monique's back in the comedy space was Cat Williams. Y'all remember the interview that he did years ago having Monique's back. With him, you only got Tiffany Haddish. She been doing comedy since she was 16. You can't tell me your favorite Tiffany Haddish joke. Why? Because she ain't done a tour yet. Mm -hmm. She ain't done a special. She has not proven the ability to tell jokes back to back for an hour to nobody. And they are already ready to down Monique and up somebody mm. who has showed them Girls Trip. Did you think she wrote Girls Trip goofball? Right. Or do you think that was already a script and they handed it to her? And so the whole situation to me is that Monique, a lot of the truth that she was saying way back when has now come to pass. Just like when she talked about pay inequality, and a lot of us, and I can say including myself, you know what I'm saying, I threw some shade at her because I felt like she was doing a bit much. But then, you know, as the months and the years went on, I finally saw Monique's point and what she was saying and what she was trying to let everybody know. So I can take ownership to that. And um, Monique is speaking truth. And unfortunately, sometimes it is the messenger that people don't like, not necessarily the message. And I think that a lot of people didn't like who the message was from. And she addresses that with Sam. And she addresses that with Shannon Sharp, and I'm really glad that she did. So we're going to go ahead and watch that real quick as well. When I saw Taraji mm -hmm. broken mm -hmm. on those platforms, it was painful to watch. However, Taraji and I had a conversation over a decade ago. Yes. In my trailer mm -hmm. when I was doing the Monique show. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, you got to keep on getting it until your turn comes. And I said, Taraji... Most of us die before our turn comes. We got to ask for it right now. Now, I understand that because there was a time I felt the same way. Exactly. Because that's what I was told. Right. You just keep going and we'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. And the next time never comes. And then you see our sister broken, sitting on those platforms. Now, when I said it, 
when I said it. Why did they get the traction when you said it that when she said it now all of a sudden everybody is coming and I and I don't have a problem I'm mm-hmm. glad yes but if you said this a decade ago and I yes. remember you saying it over a decade ago why didn't they get the traction why didn't they get the support why wasn't it propped up when Monique said it I think there's a few reasons why number one it was the messenger I should just be grateful I got invited to the party. You a big, fat, black woman. How dare you be the one? And then on top of that, you're saying names. You're saying Oprah's name out loud. You're saying Paula's name out loud. You're saying Lee's name out loud. You're saying Lionsgate out loud. That's not what we do. We say they. We say the people. We say the studio. We say the producers. How dare you actually say our heroes' names? You're very specific. These are our heroes. She is saying the truth because when Monique was speaking about this a few years ago, she was dismissed by a lot of people. You know, like we I think for the most part, like we understood where she was coming from. But I definitely agree with her that most people felt like you should just be glad that you're invited to the cookout. You should be glad that you as a black woman, a heavy set black woman, a dark skinned black woman, you should just be happy to even be in that space, breathing that air, let alone you're asking for what you think you're worth. Like who you think you are, Meryl Streep, you know, and now we see fast forward, you know, five, six, seven years later, we see Taraji on this same hobo tour, literally regurgitating the same lines that Monique regurgitated. Remember when Monique said, I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm speaking for the little girls that are coming up behind me. Taraji said the same thing on stage. But it's very interesting that when it's a different messenger, everybody's receiving it. And that's what I was saying in my live stream a few weeks ago that I felt like, no, you know, we were all wrong. Everybody should have received it when Monique was saying this. Why is it not being received now that Taraji is saying this? And why didn't Taraji speak up for Monique back then? Because again, when she was the it girl, she was cool basking in the glory and the fame. Now we fast forward, empire's over. She's getting, you know, a few roles here and there. But she's still having to struggle when she shouldn't be. Taraji's a talented actress, funny. You know, she actually went to college for acting. She didn't just luck up. She put in the work. So there's no reason why she's still struggling. And so I wish Taraji would have said something or at least co-signed with Monique back then. But I get it. You know, people get scared. They don't want to ruffle feathers. How could you say their names out loud? Because they're the ones that did it. And if I don't say it out loud, now you see a woman that is swallowing that pain, that is so stressed out. Then you see our sister Taraji P. Henson sit on that platform. And I love that baby because she's a beautiful spirit. Mm -hmm. But to see her that broken, what our community was saying was we have a hard time. Some of us, we have a hard time. Seeing a strong black woman with a back straight and a chin up and a strong black man standing by her side. We have a hard time accepting that, but we can accept seeing a black woman broken. Now it's really serious because she's falling apart. Our community had a hard time with those two things. And when I would hear people say, why is her husband there? Why is he there? It's a sad day. When we're questioning why a black man would stand with his black woman. So when you hear black women saying we're the most undervalued, disrespected, underserved, mistreated, violated, exploited, we get all of that. Then you see a black man standing with his black woman saying not on my watch. And you hear some black men saying why, why her husband got to be there. We're in a sad state of affairs when we begin to question black love and black unity. So they didn't want to hear me, some of them, because of what I look like, because I spoke about their heroes, and because they saw that man standing right there strong. I'm not the first one, but we get washed away in history so easily that we start thinking, oh, this is the first one, this is the first one. Her name is Claudette Colvin. And she's not the first one, but she was before Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. But because Claudette Colvin did not fit the picture that they thought she should look like, she was dark skinned and she had coarse hair. And because Claudette Colvin was the girl who initially started the bus boycott down south. 
She was a young 15 year old teen mom and she refused to give up her seat. And the NAACP heard about this and they wanted to, you know, tell her story. But a lot of people thought that she wasn't worthy because one, she was a teen mother. Uh, she was dark skinned. She didn't fit the aesthetic. So they replaced her with Rosa Parks and they made it seem like Rosa Parks was the person who had to move to the back of the bus and refused and got arrested. But it was really a 15 year old teen mom who led that movement to what it was, but she got forgotten in history. So I'm really glad that Monique brought her up because she does not get her just dues or her props simply because of a situation that she was in as a teenager and because she was a dark skinned young black woman. The, the organization, I believe it was the NAACP, mm -hmm. did not think she would be accepted by the white people. Mm -hmm. They had to get somebody that they said the white people could accept. We keep repeating the same thing because what I said is no different than what anyone else is saying. Not, not at all. Right. It was the messenger. And it was the way that I'm not putting my head down. I'm not shedding one tear. I'm not going to say, I don't want to say their name because I might get in trouble. I'm going to say all of it. Right. Because when you really think about that little girl coming behind you, what I don't ever want that baby to see is me broken. I don't want her to see me falling apart. And I understand it. I understand how it can happen, Shannon, when you may not have a foundation at home, Correct. when you may not have that man at home or that woman at home, whomever, that support person saying you're not crazy. Right. I got you. Come on. We're going to go through this. We're going to get through this. So for us, if we start taking things for what they are and get out of our emotions, we would be so far along. So y'all just heard what Monique had to say. She was saying some real stuff. I mean, she spoke on a lot during that interview. And just shout out to Shannon Sharp. He is doing his thing with Club Shay Shay. Like I said, I was watching it way before the Cat Williams interview. Um, but the interviews that he's gotten and the way that he actually listens to his guests, I love. The fact that he allows his guests to speak, I love. And I'm glad that Monique was able to go on her platform. And I'm glad that Monique is now getting her flowers because Monique has been in the game and she deserved better. She deserved for all of us to rally behind her and say, you know what? She is telling the truth. It is bigger than her. It is the kids coming behind us. You know, sometimes when you're the first to speak on something, when you're the truth teller, you do get blackballed, blacklisted, mistreated, shadow banned. You know what I'm saying? So I see where Monique is coming from, and I'm just glad that she's still choosing to speak out and use her platform and use her voice to speak for those who are voiceless. So this was a really wonderful interview. So if you guys have not seen it, definitely check it out. I think it's about two hours long. It's on Club Shay Shay, and I really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. I want to hear from you guys. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this entire situation with Monique. Did you watch the full interview? What did you guys think of it? How do you guys feel about what Monique had to say about Tiffany Haddish and Taraji P. Henson? So I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Make sure you guys hit this video with a like. Feel free to share the video. And most important, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.